other industries uh, being poor to a town of merchants who feel themselves like noblemen who began to control the economy of this town uh, from the late 16th century on uh, in the moment that so many manufacturers were being created here uh, commerce began to be very developed in here but allowed by the houses of the merchants and so as the merchants got the help of the local population against the noblemen and the bishops so still nowadays it is said Porto is a town of merchants uh, who feel themselves like noblemen being a town located in a quite a very industrialized area and being known like to be a very good uh, shopping area mainly for clothes shoes and leather goods and still nowadays there are many Portuguese families even living in the capital in Lisbon coming here twice a year mainly to buy shoes they say they are in a very good price uh, and we have two shopping areas in town uh, one located quite very close by your hotel around the Boa Vista Square um, where we can find there three shopping malls open every day until 11.30 in the evening so when we came back uh, when we come back to the hotel so we'll be having plenty of time to look at the shops over there located uh, in these three shopping malls that I will point out when we'll come back to the hotel because we are going to pass by uh, the Boa Vista Square and very close by from them and so um, uh, we are now driving in the direction of the riverside area so River Douro is the one crossing Porto uh, and the name given to all the region where Porto stands which is the smallest one of all the countries so Portugal is a country counting with 10 million inhabitants and being divided uh, into 11 regions and this one uh, where Porto stands is the smallest of all of them being known later crossing Portugal and meeting the Atlantic Ocean quite very close by the city center at about six kilometers far so we are not far from where we are uh, from the mouth of the River Douro um, and this river we are going to see in a few moments rises in Spain in Urbion mountain at about 2,000 meters high and it is in total 927 kilometers long uh, from the rise to the mouth already here in Porto um, and in Portugal it comes across an extension of 213 kilometers being nowadays quite rather important for the production of hydroelectric energy due to the five dams built along the river uh, which are also quite towns located by the riverside uh, against uh, the river floods because in the past we would be affected every year every winter by river floods nowadays it is getting better but anyway, also um, the dams built along the river and uh, four years ago, on the year 2001, we were affected by river floods uh, for about six times in that winter. So it was very hard for the town and mainly for people living in the very old historical center of the town, in the very old quarters located by the riverside, where lives most of the local population in the city center there by the riverside. And now, here we are facing a red river and also on your right side you can find a little monument uh, in a little square um, which remind us that from here had left the boats to Ceuta in 1415. Ceuta is located in North Africa, nowadays belongs to Spain, but it was in here where Henry the Navigator had organized this voyage there in a moment that there was no, not so good food to give to the navigators and so the population of Porto decided to give all the good meat they had at home 
home to them and like that they could only remain with tripe. As for a long time we had only got tripe to eat, we began to be called the tripe eaters. Still nowadays we are known the same way and the tripe cooked in Oporto style began to be the very characteristic course, very appreciated by all of us that we cook with white beans, veal, chicken, um, pork, meat, chorizo and we love tripe cooked in Oporto style being the speciality for gastronomy in town. And now on your right side, but on the left bank of the river, we can already see uh, the Afurada fishing village, where there's about uh, 2,000 people living there, most of them fishermen, living every day on their trolley boats to catch sardines. And it is also over there where um, we organize a big festival every year in homage to St. Peter on the late June, uh, where we can see the best fireworks of the town. And now, in front of us, we can see the Ahabida Bridge. This is one of the six bridges built over the river here in town, and it was inaugurated in 1963, built in concrete and considered to be a real sheave of art because of the opening of its arch with 270 meters of porter. And there's even one bridge built over this river by Gustav Eiffel, uh, which is the Maria Pia Bridge, inaugurated in 1877 like a railway bridge, not anymore in use, and replaced by another bridge just behind it, and called the St. John's Bridge. And in total we do have six bridges in town, and this afternoon we are going to cross one of them, which, which will be the Don Luis the First Bridge, uh, with two and we are going to do it using the lower deck of it to go to Villanova de Gaia later on to visit the Port Wine Lodge there. Now, here we are arriving at Massarello's Quarter and this quarter was in the past a fishing quarter uh, to where all the boats bringing codfish into town uh, would stop. Uh, not anymore nowadays and nowadays it is where on your left we can find the Tramway Museum and still nowadays uh, we can pick up a tram here and um, doing all this way by tram. It is a very pleasant ride using very old trams uh, dating back to 1925, 1930, still on use and every tram uh, we can find um, in the tramway museum, in the cable car museum, uh, they are still on use and the first one uh, appearing in Portugal appeared here in Porto, came to this town already in 1872 and by that time it was called like the American because it was still pulled by a pair of horses um, and you know it was called the American because it was in New York uh, that appeared the first uh, cable car the first tram like that pulled by a pair of horses uh, and then later on uh, in 1895 came the first tram or cable car already uh, working with electricity uh, like still nowadays uh, that we can find here by the riverside area and now on your right side but already on the left bank of the river we can find uh, Villa Nova de Gaia the town where we are going later on where only there we can find all the port wine cellars um, being a town where there's more people living there than here in Porto uh, so it is there where most of people working here do live um, around 290,000 inhabitants and quite close by Villa Nova de Gaia, we can find another town called Gondomar, being one of the four around Porto, also being very well known uh, because uh, of the filigran uh, manufacturers we can still find there. I mean, filigree, filigrana is a kind of goldsmithery, still handmade uh, at home uh, by women who are used to do it in their free time 
and I mean a very detailed work done in gold or that can be on silver golded um, and uh, like earrings, necklaces, uh, all done with very thin particles of gold can be done also uh, in silver golded. And so it is what it is still handmade very close by here the city centre. And now here we are on the way to the Stock Exchange Palace, uh, which is the reception hall of the town. We are going to visit uh, this afternoon. Uh, and so um, it will be there where we are going to find uh, very fine uh, rooms that can be rented uh, for um, uh, all kind of events by banks and companies uh, and being really the symbol of the importance of the merchants uh, in this town still controlling nowadays um, the economy uh, of this town uh, being still nowadays Porto a very busy town with lots of traffic as you can notice um, everyone if um, everyone could would leave uh, the car on in their office, not in front, but inside the office, because people don't like to walk so much. They prefer to bring their cars, even though um, they are so expensive. Um, but um, um, it's according to the mentality. The Portuguese people like to drive cars very much. Um, and so everyone comes to the city center by by car also nowadays there's the subway or to say uh, in certain areas of porto it is like a subway in other quarter cities like a light vehicle train um, because porto stands on a very rocky area crossing the upper deck of the don luis the first bridge when we'll be going to sandaman uh, so it is already moving uh, in quite very close by your hotel, uh, close by the Boa Vista Square, and we'll be arriving at uh, Elias Avenue, the main avenue in town. You can see the tram moving on your left. As you can see, it is like all the very old trams uh, still in use. And so here we are, uh, still, still on traffic trams, uh, on the way to the Stock Exchange Palace. We are going to visit in a few moments. And it is here on your left side where we can find quite very old houses from the 18th century, located in uh, an old quarter called Mira Gaia. It is the quarter facing Gaia on the other bank of the river, on the left bank of the river, where you can find um, mostly the characteristic style of the construction up here in the north, where most of the houses were built on granite, the very hard stone, wrought iron balconies or even wooden balconies and they all have very high and narrow facades where normally we would accommodate a family per floor for the owner not to pay so high taxes. What we can still find here in the old uh, quarters of the town located mainly by the riverside area uh, being this right side we can find the customs house this big building dating back to the late 19th century
and Shari don't hear upstream anymore due to the silting up of the waters of the river. Nowadays, the big boats go straight to the new harbor located um, quite close by a town of the four located in the outskirts, uh, being not far from the airport serving Porto on the west part of the town. On itself doesn't count anymore with the natural harbor like before where we export mainly all the grand buildings and houses built on arcades for being better protected from the river floods in the past and so in the old quarters we can find mainly uh, houses built on arcades people live here do it for a long time for a long time pardon uh, can be for 20 30 or even 40 years uh, and so they can pay very low rent so that to the left side we can find a big building which is the justice palace built in 1961 by the time of Salazar who was the very well-known dictator who had governed Portugal for almost uh, 40 years and all the buildings of his time show as the same style being very big buildings uh, to show how powerful he was by the moment he was governing Portugal and we had this is a very nice church nowadays this uh, quarter on your left it is no longer a fisherman quarter but there's still the church dedicated to St. Peter and most of the churches were very well decorated with tiles. The present day church that's back already to the 18th century shows as a Baroque decoration like most of the churches uh, in town. Por Porto is the uh, capital for Baroque art all over the country where were built in the 18th century modified by the time in Baroque, uh, always left in Chesnel by the time that Brazil was a Portuguese colony. And so for us, it should be the main decoration of them, the gold carved wood, the region where we can find most of the faithful population of the country, mainly uh, very big stairways in front of pilgrimage centers, what can be found all over the northern part of the country. So there are uh, many English people, or Scottish more precisely, in town because tonight we are going to have um, a match of football held in Porto in the Dragon Stadium in the eastern part of the town in between football club of Porto and Glasgow Rangers. What is really a very beautiful stadium of football, one of the ten um, brand new football stadiums built in the country last year for the Euro Cup for football organized in the country in June uh, and um, uh, we have two brand new stadiums in not far from your hotel and uh, to build all these stadiums we have invited very well-known architects mm, and um, uh, we have one in Braga not far from here built by Sotomo of eight days uh, on a way of saying that you can go across the river until the boat eight days being like a boat hotel and these ones on your right side on the left bank of the river are used for that purpose, used in the high season and also classified by UNESCO on the year 2001 uh, to be a part of World Heritage. And another tram or another, another cable car is coming, a street car. Uh, we are not far from the Stock Exchange Palace you uh, know, I've never seen this street like that, like today. Uh, you know, we can see it later on, but at four o'clock, you know, it's quite a bus. 
so inside the palace, or to say, the fine building we are going to visit in a few moments, it is forbidden to take pictures and or to film inside. So if you'd like to bring your cameras with you, please uh, don't take pictures. Uh, so it is here on your left side where we can find the San Francis Church. 370 kilos of gold, all a decoration left with gold carved wood, so rich belonging to a so poor religious order because it was chosen by the very wealthy merchants to be their pantheon and they couldn't be buried in the so poor church so they brought all the gold they, they could from Brazil and nowadays it is a very rich And just in front of it, that is the Bishop Palace. It was built in the 18th century by Nicolao Nazoni, uh, who was, to be said, the most important architect and painter who had worked in more than 50 monuments up here in the north, like an architect, like a painter, and being very important for Baroque art uh, all over the northern part of the country. So. Porto has a bishop from 1120 on, by the time this town was given to a French bishop, who was before uh, the Archbishop of Santiago de Compostela, the town uh, from where we are not so far in Galicia, in northern Spain, and Porto was always on the way to Santiago. So many pilgrims would go there in pilgrimage, would pass by Porto because Porto was uh, on one of the three ways used by the pilgrims to there, to Santiago. And the church you can see, second oldest one of the country, built. <laughs> Uh, on the 12th century in Romanesque style, uh, but then very modified later on um, in the 18th century uh, in Baroque style, being the second oldest cathedral of the country. Um, all, the, all them were built from the north to the southern part of the country because the Christian reconquest uh, began to be done in the north and ended in the south because it was in the south where Arabs had stayed longer from the 8th to the middle of the 13th century. And here we are, finally arriving at the Henri the Navigator Square, uh, where in the middle of the square on your left side, we can find the statue representing Henri the Navigator, who was born quite close by here in the house on this street on your right side. And uh, what happened already in 1394, uh, being Henry the Navigator, uh, the third son of John I and Philip of Lancaster. Uh, he was a Portuguese king, John I, and she was already an English princess, Her, uh, Philip of Lancaster, uh, who was in fact the granddaughter of Edward III of England, uh, and they got married in order to seal an alliance uh, which was then signed uh, between two countries all over Europe. What happened with this wedding in 1387? What happened in the cathedral of this town? And Henry the Navigator on your left uh, is known like the Prince of Sagres because he had created a navigation school in Sagres in Algarve from where left most of the Portuguese expeditions to discover new lands in Africa, America and in the Orient. And so here we are, quite close by the Stock Exchange Palace. And as you can notice, there are so many policemen in the street because uh, of uh, there's so many Scottish people around, maybe <laughs> drunk later on, and so they are afraid of them, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so, it's not normal anyway to see so many policemen, it is why I'm just <laughs> uh, referring it. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, finally, we are arriving. <laughs> <laughs>
finally, so it is on your right side where you can find another Baroque style church, the Misericordia on your right side, located in a very typical street of the town called the Flower Street. And it is here on your right side as well where you can find 18th century houses, look at the wrought iron balconies. Uh, where on each house, on each roof of the house, you can find a skylight to give more light to the house. In a hilly town where we go up and down, where each house was built close by another, and to give more light to the houses, skylights were built in iron and glass in the 19th century um, by the Romantics who would like to be in touch with nature, and the skylight could give more more light to the houses. On your left we can see now an old market uh, from the late 19th century which is like uh, something left from the Iron Age in town, quite very important of the town. So here we are uh, arriving at the palace uh, <laughs> and uh, we shall be visiting uh, this 19th century fine building on your right side. That we are going to see in a few moments, known like the British factory, where I used to get assembled uh, the 12 members of the British factory, all them English, all... Uh, Cousins and Andrew, we're on. <laughs> that's his flag there, isn't yes. it? Yes, that's an Andrew, yeah. Yes, yes. Coming from Yorkshire to build here the British factory and uh, on your right side look to your right side so many people the quarter uh, which is uh, the very old quarter of the town where the Romans arrived on the second century after Jesus Christ um, creating their a fishing harbor to where they had called Portus meaning in Latin a fishing harbor and on the top of the hill where the cathedral stands the Romans had found Celtic remains to where they had called Cali and the town was created in between these two areas where uh, the city walls were built around and the lands by the river began to be called the lands of Portus Cali. And now here we are on the way of crossing the bridge in front of us called the Louis the First Bridge being a double deck bridge and if you do look to your left after this uh, um, a concrete bridge on your left you can see an iron one there on your left which is the one built by Gustav Eiffel called Maria Pia bridge so being it on your left built on the year 2003 in order to replace the upper deck of this bridge we are going uh, to cross bridge uh, the one inaugurated in 1886 built with two decks the lower we are just crossing and the upper deck built by a student of Gustav Eiffel who was Théophile Seyrig, a Belgian engineer. And in front of us, on the top of the hill, we can see the Our Lady of Pilar Monastery from the late 16th century, uh, built uh, to be more in use like a monastery, but belonging to the Portuguese army, being turned into barracks at the moment that religious orders were expelled from the country in 1834 after the liberal wars and most of the convents and monasteries were turned uh, into barracks, schools and later universities. So here we are in Villa Nova de Gaia in another town where in front of us we are going to see uh, the 
rappel boat since been used, but used in the past to transport uh, port wine barrels from the Doro Valley where the wine is produced to here where the wine is brought to get old in oak barrels. Nowadays these boats in front of us, the Rabello boats, uh, are used once a year for a race organized by the Sunshine's Festival. Um, on the 24th of June, we put the sails on them where we can read on the sails the name of each porter already by the time of the Romans. And on the top of the hill, we can find the big white building, which is the Bishop Palace, where behind stands the cathedral. And you can also see the Clerigo's Tower, uh, the highest right. one in town, in town being the of the town because it is the highest tower and the most pure baroque style monument in the town so here we are arriving at Sandman so our bus uh, will be parked in the far end of this street so we are Porto Portugal Porto for longer its initial characteristics. So it's a very young, full body apples, plums, strawberries. That wine is called ruby pork. It will faster, it will oxidize more, and it will have a lighter amber color and a more elegant, sophisticated aroma of self. So this is called tawny port. So those are the two types of red port, the ruby and the tawny. This week, I think they lit up. Mm -hmm. 